welcome you today as we remember St. Apollinarius. Today we're hearing the introduction to the book of Jeremiah. We're reading from chapter 1. We're hearing about his call and commission. And there, there are some words here that I think many of us have encountered. You may be seeing those on a, a pro-life uh, billboard or maybe a meme or something. Uh, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. Before you were born, sacred scripture is attributing human characteristics to something, someone before they are born, right? I hope that we would agree that someone is human before their birth, <laughs> you know, and that in that sense. And so it, it's this very, uh, a very striking example of within the text of sacred scripture, this testimony to human life, the meaning of life, the meaning of the gift of, of life. And another thing, too, is that Jeremiah, uh, he, the Lord kind of heads him off where he says, say not, I am too young. And just kind of sharing something from my perspective, you know, I, I was ordained a priest at 28 years old. And basically spent my 20s, started seminary about, you know, 2000, uh, 2008, I think. You anyway, know, so I spent most of my 20s in seminary, and I remember, you know, I was assigned to Nativity Cathedral in Biloxi, and I remember being intimidated by everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, how am I going to preach and teach and guide people who have many of whom have been in, been around twice as long as I have and have done more things and you know made made a lot of money made some in, some incredible mistakes how am I going to help people when that's not really my profile you know and uh, it, it it and I feel like it's just amazing how God has worked certainly in my my own life and I think of many other priests that I know uh, and a lot of priests these days are what we call second vocation. Second vocation, that's actually like Father Mike is one of those, Father Mark Ropel I used to serve with, which means and it's just a way of saying that they had a job that they held for many years, they had a lifestyle, and then uh, discern priesthood later in life. Second vocation. And it doesn't make any tangible difference in that a person is ordained, ordained, you know. But... Uh, you just, you know, it's God, God works, and, and I, I thank God for the grace he's given me to be able to be helpful in, in different people's lives in different situations, because I know that so many, so many ways, in so many ways, he has had to, to help me to understand things and see them from their perspective, but just ministering to people, too, also teaches you a lot. You know, over, over a few years, you start to, to notice trends and start to, to learn more. And so I thank God for his grace in that regard. And today we hear our parable of the sower. And this is such a classic gospel story, the parable of the sower. And, you know, you look at it, okay? So this, this person goes out to sow, and he, he's throwing the, the seed, you know, he's throwing the, thing out, the, the seeds out that need to, to uh, go into the ground. So obviously the ground has been prepared for, uh, in some way, for this sowing. And there's three situations, right, that the, some of the seed lands on the rocky ground. There isn't a lot of soil. I mean, the soil cannot be prepared because it's just bad ground. And then there is the, the, the shallow soil, and it, 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 it begins to, you know, takes root, or it doesn't take root. You know, it starts to grow, but it doesn't really last. And then the third one is, uh, there is also the one with the thorns. There's also the final one where the seed does take root. And this kind of goes back to question people ask sometimes of, you know, how many people are going to heaven? Well, in these four scenarios, only the final group where it does take root and produce fruit 
only one fourth of the group actually does take root. And so obviously I can't answer that question of how many people go to heaven, but it should make us take pause and kind of be serious, be kind of serious about this, you know, because we know how easy it is to be a shallow Christian, to be a cafeteria Catholic. Well, the Catholic Church is nice, and you know, I usually go once or twice a year or something, and when my, you know, I go with my granddaughter or whatever, you know, and maybe that's being very shallow. Or uh, maybe, uh, well, I, I, the Catholic Church is good, but um, I can't really agree with their teachings on sexuality, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, a woman's choice should be this and that. Maybe that is being choked by the thorns of uh, of social media, of, of the manipulation of the world, but to produce fruit. And that's our, our goal as people, is to really be able to be intentional, intentional disciples that can produce fruit. And there has never been a time where there has been so much need for witness, I think, that you need to not hide your Catholic faith. The very fact that it is clear to other people that you believe, that you're a Catholic who believes, who accepts everything the church teaches and is trying to practice it, doesn't make you a per doesn't mean you're practicing it perfectly. Nobody is without fault, uh, is going to be an incredible testimony to your a being able to produce fruit. And I go back to something else that St. Augustine, the legendary St. Augustine, said uh, that I think about sometimes. He said, in the final age, there will be only, the only kind of people that will be left in the church will be saints. In the final age, there will only be saints that will be left. And that's another kind of sober thought. But I pray as we continue this week, we will really become those saints that are able to, to produce fruit, to, to, to spread the gospel to other people, to let people see how appealing and how beautiful Christ is in our lives.